this is the BlackBerry Torch, BlackBerry's third attempt at building a touchscreen smartphone. Uh, if you don't know about the other two attempts, uh, BlackBerry called them the BlackBerry Storm as well as the Storm 2. And uh, the, their third attempt, I must say, is actually uh, quite a good attempt. And they finally managed to figure a way where they can actually combine, you know, merge the experience of uh, a touchscreen BlackBerry together with what you had with your normal physical key board, um, you know, physical keyed BlackBerry devices uh, in terms of their software, right? But before we get to the software, let's take a look at the hardware of this particular device. Right, so on the front here you have a 3 point, uh, it's a 3 inch, slightly larger than a 3 inch display, alright, um, and it's a capacitive touch screen, you know, not resistive, thank god, okay, and then of course right here you have uh, the optical sensor that uh, they use to kind of adjust the, the display brightness, uh, you got the speakers right here, physical buttons here, which are the same on, on any BlackBerry device today. Uh, you got a call, hang up to on the standby, you know, the on-off switch, uh, the back button, the BlackBerry key, as well as an op optical trackpad. All right. Once again, some of you might like it, some of you might not. All right. So personally, I, I'm totally fine with it. But some of you, you know, really, you guys really believe in the the little trackball, and you know, so that's one thing that you might want to take note of. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at the, the top of the device. Okay, so right here you have the uh, lock and unlock key, you have the, the, hang, the, the ringer silencer button, okay, you have a 3.5mm jack at the side, volume control, as well as a customizable key, which by default is set to the camera. And uh, um, like most camera keys, it's a two-level key, so push it lightly to autofocus, push it all the way to take a picture. All right, of course, uh, it's customizable. On the other side, you have nothing but a USB, a micro USB port, so you don't have an extra second customizable key as you would find on some Blackberries. Okay, at the back you have a 5.0 megapixel camera with autofocus as well as an LED flash. Okay, and uh, you have a rubberized back cover, which I, I'm quite fond of. It feels very comfortable. Uh, it's rubberized at the sides as well, so it, you know it actually is quite nice to to hold on to, so which is great. Right, so that's the hardware, and of course, you know, the star of this particular device is the sliding keyboard itself. So BlackBerry figured out that, you know what, they're not good with touchscreens, but they are very good with building a thumbboard. So they decided to go back to its roots and build a good thumbboard. And uh, if you want to have a, a, some sort of comparison with size, uh, right here I have the BlackBerry Bold 9780, and you can see that, uh, you know, the, the keyboard size is you know practically identical the key sizes are identical the spaces are identical so you know if you have good experiences typing on a blackberry keyboard you'll have that same experience on this keyboard which is uh, which is not too bad all right which is good and of course if you if you've already noticed um the, the buttons are backlit all right so you can see that if i cover the optical sensor the buttons will light up which is great so that's the hardware, and by the way, if you're interested in the, the, uh, the physical size, again, I'm just going to put it next to a normal BlackBerry. You can see that the physical size is almost identical, with the exception that the screen is a lot larger. But quite strangely, despite of the fact that the, um, you know, the screen is larger, the pixels are exactly the same. So it's also 480 pixels by 360 pixels, and this is the same resolution on all of the other BlackBerry devices, uh, the non-touchscreen ones at least. So even though there's a bigger size, you don't get extra pixels, okay? Uh, but it's it's fine actually. In my personal opinion, you know, the display is sharp enough. Uh, you can see what you need to see. The images look crisp, and the colors look great. Okay. So um, and also, if you let you know, let's get into the software. Might as well since the screen is on. Now the first thing you'll notice is that um, the screen rotates. Okay. So in all three directions, everything except upside down. And, um, you know, one thing that you'll notice if you caught our previous episode of the BlackBerry Bold 9780, um, this device is running on BlackBerry OS 6.0, the sixth version, and the user interface looks almost identical. I mean, really everything, you have the, 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 the status bar on the top, and then you have, um, you know, this, this little panel at the bottom, which you can scroll between all applications, your frequently used applications, your downloads and your medias, and so on and so forth. All right, and um, you really get a lot of the same things. You get the same experience, which is what I thought was very good because um, they've really combined the experience of having you know the normal BlackBerry devices with the touchscreen devices. So what you would enjoy 
on uh, a, another BlackBerry OS 6 device such as the, the Bolt 9780 you will enjoy it here as well. Things like the notification system, touch on the clock, you can very easily turn connections on or off, or right? including even alarm clocks and quick shortcuts to set up screens, you know, Wi-Fi networks, Bluetooth connections, service status, so on and so forth, which is good. Okay, and then um, you know you have the same notification system, and again the same integration with Facebook, uh, Twitter as well as uh, MySpace. So whenever you get a Twitter ad reply, you get a, um, you know a Twitter direct message, a Facebook message, a comment, and stuff like that. Um, you will all they will all get pushed in together into the notification panel with you know just like um, all of your emails, your SMSs, and your BlackBerry messages. So you can see if I touch this button, you'll get to see all of the notifications. Right, you get the same uh, search capability. All right, so basically you can search for anything. You know, um, on the device, whether it's in an application, a contact, an email, or whatever, you can all do that on the search screen. Uh, you know, you got the profile button where you can switch between silence and things like that. So you can take a look. Let me just touch that. All right, and uh, like I mentioned, the application launcher. So they're all here. You know, um, and you know, the user interface is a lot more graphical in OS 6.0 compared to OS 5, which is very text-based. All right. Um, so for example, uh, if I go into the uh, the setup screen. Um, right here, there's a lot more icons, there's a lot more pictures, and and uh, um, you know e even on the non touchscreen versions of the BlackBerry OS 6, the UI is exactly the same. Of course, you know with this makes it easier for touchscreens because then you can you know just very easily just touch uh, touch the screen and you can quickly enter the interface. All right, um, so I'm just gonna exit this. Okay, and uh, one thing though is that um, you know they they've really gotten uh, the the touchscreen UI is compared to the Torch and the Torch. Uh, the, sorry, the Storm and the Storm Two. Uh, however, I still think that there's a lot of room for improvement. Right, this that certainly is the best touchscreen device that they've done. Right, but uh, there still is a lot of room of improvement. The user interface is not that intuitive. Um, let's say, for example, this particular panel. Uh, if you are used to normal touchscreen devices on other platforms such as on Android or iOS or Windows Phone Seven, uh, you would instinctively want to pull the entire panel up to bring up the entire menu but that doesn't happen on this device you have to target onto the the, the top of the the menu before you can actually pull things up okay and you can pull them a little bit upwards where you've eight icons but you can't scroll right you can pull it up to 12 and you still cannot scroll and you have to pull it all the way to the maximum before you can start scrolling the menu and um, so you know when you're doing things really quick you need to get access to stuff very quickly like you saw earlier at the very beginning of the clip when I tried to navigate the user interface I instantly pulled the entire menu when I, in order to open the program launcher but that did not happen so uh, it's just little things like this that you know these are little things when it comes to um, user interface being intuitive um, with time, you'll get used to it. You'll know what to do, right? Because intuition is about the first time you get access to the unit. Unit, what is the first thing that you instinctly want to do? And that's what intuition, uh, having an intuitive user interface, is all about. So, uh, you know, uh, if if that's the case, after a while, you will get used to the the, the interface. Another thing you've noticed of um, is that there is a touchscreen keyboard. Right. So, for example, if you hit this, the uh, the search button, if the physical keyboard is closed, there will be a touchscreen keyboard. Of course, you know it's not that good. I mean, it, it, you can type on it. I can type fairly well on this keyboard. Um, and uh, uh, but of course, you know they mainly want you to use the touchscreen keyboard. You've got such a great touchboard, you know, a thumbboard. Why do you want to use a touchscreen keyboard for? But it is there, right? And you can do it fairly well. Uh, you got a shift key. You can go to the uh, the numbers. You can go to the symbols and things like that. All right, and um, but if, and also through this keyboard, I can actually demonstrate to you that, that this is a multi-touch keyboard. So, for example, I'm hitting the caps key, and but yet I can still you know move between uh, the the keys. All right, so this is a multi uh, multi-touch screen, and to further um, you know to further demonstrate this, I'm just gonna go into the multitasking menu and open the, the browser, and over here I have the GDGT website. All right, this the web browser on OS 6.0 is powered by WebKit, which is the same engine that is powering Android devices as well as uh, iPhones and iOS devices. All right, there is multi. Uh, you know, you can pinch and zoom. Okay, it is a little bit. Uh, it is not as responsive as uh, most other touchscreen devices, but it's good enough. Right, you can double tap. Um, double tap. 
all right uh, to and what they do is they will actually resize the text okay so you can see that it, it's it, there are certain parts of uh, certain areas where they're not as responsive okay and then at the top you can have a little bouncing effect as well so that is the browser there is multi-touch and also I think you've already noticed when I first went in if you move the touchpad you will get the good old you know uh, mouse thing right that you find on most Blackberry devices as well okay so in summary this certainly is a great attempt at uh, building a touchscreen Blackberry and it's a good attempt. Uh, I think they've done a good job with it. But if you're coming from a normal BlackBerry device, you might want to just take note that um, it is not as smooth as an, as most other BlackBerry, like say BlackBerry Bold, for example. Or if you're used to a BlackBerry Bold, uh, regardless of the series, 9000 series or the 8000 series, um, you will find that this one is slightly sluggish. It's not as responsive as responsive as, as these BlackBerry. And if you come from a normal smartphone device, uh, other touchscreen devices, um, you'll realize that um, the, the, there are certain things that they're still not very, the user interface still isn't um, as intuitive. So there are certain things that you will get a little bit frustrated with because you find that you can't do it on a BlackBerry, on the BlackBerry uh, Torch, right? But they're, they're really small minor things, all right? Uh, the likewise, uh, same with the BlackBerry Bold. It's not like as if this whole thing just freezes to a halt. Um, you know, icons still move uh, relatively smoothly, all right? It's just that y you'll probably be very used to very, very smooth user interfaces on uh, previous BlackBerry devices. So these are two things that you should take note of before you get onto uh, this BlackBerry device. All right. And again, you know, go to the shops, play with it. If you have, you know, friends to have it, play with it. Um, take note of how smoothly the user interface was moving in this particular video, and uh, let that help you um, decide uh, whether if it's a device that you actually. Uh, want to get and again um, you know if you're new to BlackBerry just know this that you need to have a BlackBerry internet service if not this device is equivalent is, is as good as nothing all right all the services here rely heavily on the BlackBerry internet services all right so that's the BlackBerry Torch and I hope you enjoyed this video if this video was helpful for you and you really enjoyed it you might want to check out some of our other videos and our other podcasts on technology and gadgets uh, from a Singapore Singaporean perspective Visit our website www.tech65.org for more awesome content. Alright, so that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you guys soon.